Thank you, ButcherBox, for sponsoring this episode and supporting my show. ButcherBox believes in better. They partner directly with farmers who are committed directly. to raising... <laughs> they partner directly with farmers who are committed to treating animals humanely and sustainable farming practices to bring high-quality meats directly to your door. Mm -hmm. They offer 100% grass-fed meats, free-range organic poultry, heritage breed pork, and wild-caught seafood. You choose your box type and delivery frequency, and you can skip a month or cancel anytime. And your order comes in an eco-friendly, 100% recyclable box. New members will get a whole, free-range, all-natural turkey in their first box for free. For free. Head to the link in the video description to sign up now and get yours in time for the holidays. Get on it. Get on it. Holidays approaching. This is a limited time offer. You're not going to get a turkey after Thanksgiving. Nope. Why would you? Ladies and gentlemen, today Sola El Whaley is putting a spin on movie snacks. It's time to stump Sola. Ooh. Food illusions. Food illusions. What exactly is that? I think in my head it's like when you see a shoe on Instagram and then it turns out to be a cake. Ooh, that's charming. I don't know how to do that. Oh, you don't know how to do that? No, not at all. Oh, but okay. <laughs> I'm gonna figure it out. <laughs> I mean, I've learned a few things about you on this show. You love fire. Love fire. And you can't be stumped, and you figure it out. We'll see. Movie snacks food illusions. How's that gonna go? I mean, I love movie snacks. I love movie snacks. I'm gonna try and make movie snacks that are actually something else, but they look like something else. That sounds like the challenge. Yeah. <laughs> well, Sola, as usual, I can't wait to try it, and I'm glad I don't have to make it. We'll see you on the other side. This is definitely something that I don't know how to do. Actually, when I saw it on the wheel, at first I was like, maybe we should take that off. <laughs> but it's here, it's there, it happened, we landed on it. What I know about food illusions is I've seen some cool stuff on Instagram now where you see something that looks like a flip flop and then they cut into it and it's a cake. So it's pretty awesome. There's some really incredible stuff out there. I don't know how to do any of that. I, I can't do this one, I'm definitely gonna be stumped. So I'm just gonna like have fun and do whatever the hell I want. Movie snacks are something that I really, really like. A big appeal of going to the movie theater is to get the snacks. I always get popcorn and I think it's the only place that I get licorice and Whoppers. I also really like how the candy comes in boxes and it makes me wanna eat candy. But the, I feel like some of the new theaters don't do that. Have you noticed that? I haven't been to a theater in a while. Yeah, I guess none of us have. <laughs> popcorn, I wanna make popcorn ice cream by steeping the milk with some popcorn and then making an ice cream with it. You know what sounds really good? It's just like a bowl of popcorn milk with popcorn on top. Maybe we could just stop there. <laughs> Anyways, must be a licorice. I want to take parsnips and candy them in sugar and beet juice so it gets like dark red, like a hopefully like around the same color as licorice. And then I want to dehydrate them and twist them and hopefully it kind of looks a little bit like licorice and then you bite into it and you're like, ew, it's a parsnip slash beet. Fun. And I want to do something that's like a Whopper. None of these are going to look like their things. Whatever. For the Whopper, this is just going to be stupid. I'm going to make meatballs because I've been watching a lot of The Office and one of my favorite gags is when Jim puts meatballs in Dwight's stuff and then Stanley yells, you've been meatballed. Can we get a cut? of like, you've been meatballed. What the? You've been meatballed. <laughs> so I want to just yell, you've been meatballed. And I want to make a gravy and try and glaze the meatballs in the gravy. I feel like that might work, but I don't know. That's what we're doing today. I'm going to start by working on my parsnip licorice. The first thing I'm going to do is cut the parsnips into long pieces. I'm going to candy this until it's nice and tender and sweet in a mixture of sugar and beet juice and then they're gonna go in the dehydrator. And once it's like halfway dry, I wanna twist it. And I'm hoping that these edges will kind of look similar to the, the ridges that you see in like a Twizzler thing. I, I'm, this is gonna be a bad one. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Uh, can you tell? Can you feel my anxiety? I'm gonna just simmer that gently until the parsnips are nice and tender and like they've become one with the sugar. You become, you become. become one with the sugar. sugar. Does that make sense? We'll see. Let's see how this stump goes. <laughs> okay, so the parsnips I've set aside, it's gonna keep simmering while I work on popcorn ice cream. The popcorn ice cream is gonna be, it's gonna be a pretty classic ice cream base. So milk, cream, sugar, egg yolks, and on glaze. The only thing to make it popcorn ice cream, I'm gonna steep the milk with some popcorn. I'm gonna set my beet juice aside. Mm. I feel like it would be very good with some gin. 
a little splash of gin down into it, a little lemon, maybe top it with a little sparkling water. I think this is the next cool beverage. Mm hmm It's probably good for you or something. Okay, I'm going to use a bagged popcorn because this stuff has like lots of nice artificial butter flavoring <laughs> that I think is gonna really come through. Um, I've done it before with just like popcorn that I popped and it's just, the flavor's a little bit subtle. How is it even so yellow? My popcorn never looks like that. The main thing is you wanna do a cold steep. If you do a hot liquid, it kind of just swells up whatever you're soaking. You just lose it all. It just gets sucked up into the oats or the crackers or the popcorn or whatever. So cold steep, overnight, you get a lot of flavor. And luckily, Kendall has soaked one for me already. All right, here's our popcorn milk. Now I'm just gonna strain it and use this to make my ice cream base. It smells like popcorn. It's very subtle. It's not as popcorny as I wanted. What else can we do? There's a lot of good flavor on this bag and I wanna figure out how to get it into my milk. So I think I'm gonna scrape the popcorn gunk off of the bag and add it to my milk. I think this is where the real flavor is. I strained out that popcorn that was steeping overnight and I'm gonna add some more, just the dark orange ones because they seem to have more flavor and I'm gonna let that just get soggy and wet in there <laughs> and then I'm gonna blend it so we have like actual popcorn puree in our popcorn ice cream and I think that's gonna really help bump up the flavor. So the parsnips have been simmering in this beet syrup for a while now, maybe like an hour. It's tender. It almost looks like a candy already, like a gummy candy. And we just got started. So I'm gonna lay it out on the dehydrator. We're gonna be positive. This is gonna be a great episode. You're gonna be so entertained. That's pretty good. The inside's a little bit like fluffy almost. You don't taste too much beet, I'm surprised. It's more like parsnipy sweet earthiness. So I'm going to dehydrate this until it's just like stiffened up a little bit and then I'm going to twist it and let it go some more into the dehydrator. Now I'm going to make my popcorn ice cream. I'm going to take my popcorn and milk that's been soaking. I'm going to blend that until it's smooth. I'm going to be making my ice cream base. Let's see how much milk this is. I need about eight ounces. All right, I'm adding eight ounces of cream, seven egg yolks. I'm going to add about a half teaspoon of salt and six ounces of sugar. So I'm going to whip together the eggs and the sugar until they get creamy and like come to a, it's called ribbon stage. And it's cause it'll fall off the whisk and ribbons. This bowl might be a little small. Perhaps we transfer. While I whip this, I'm bringing the milk up. There's a lot of starch in there from the popcorn. I'm gonna stir it occasionally to make sure it doesn't scorch. I made a cracker ice cream once. It was a 16 gallon batch. I wasn't stirring vigorously enough and it burned. But I thought it tasted delicious. It turned into toasted, toasted cracker ice cream. So sometimes your mistakes are wonderful, right? I'm trying to be entertaining, guys. It is entertaining. I don't believe you. Sometimes I'm like, I feel like getting the mixer is more work than just doing it, but it's not. I should have just gotten the mixer. <sighs> I feel good about that. This is simmering. I don't want to add this hot mixture to the eggs all in one shot because then the eggs are going to gr get grainy and maybe even curdle. So instead you do something called tempering where you add a little bit at a time, bring the temperature up of this mixture and then bring it all together. It's not chocolate tempering, don't worry. This is easy peasy. So a little, a little bit of this and a little bit of this. Oh gosh. Oh boy. Bowl is spinning. Okay, here we go. I'm just putting it all in there. Now we're gonna go back in the pot and cook it. Now I'm gonna strain this afterwards, hoping to catch all those little grainy bits of popcorn, but you should always strain your custard because there's this little tough part on the, on the egg called a chalazy, and it's the thing that connects the egg yolk to the egg white. It's awful, it's like a booger but with more texture. I think that we are, we have achieved unglaze. Can you see the steam? It coats the back of a spoon and it holds a trail. So that's how you know you're there. Now I'm gonna cool this down over an ice bath before churning it. So it churns faster and then you get like a smoother texture. Ice bath. <laughs> Thank you, Kendall. Cooling off. The color is nice, eh? I believe we have chills. Let's spin. Popcorn ice cream. I think it's gonna be tasty. Ice cream has been spinning and I feel like it looks pretty good. That looks good, right? Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Here's the food illusion part. So I'm gonna put the ice cream in here and then top it with popcorn. Food illusion, done. <laughs> is it popcorn or is it ice cream? Whoa, whoa. I'm gonna pop this in the freezer. So the licorice has been dehydrating and I'm gonna check on it, see if it's ready to twist. And it is ready to twist. It is. They still look like glassy like a candy, which is good. It like doesn't want to stay twisted. Perhaps this is not going to do what I wanted it to do. If I hold it, it looks pretty good, but it's not staying. We're going to try to cut a strip of parchment to like hold it down and then tape the parchment to the wire rack. Tape doesn't really want to stick to the parchment. <laughs> <laughs> this tape can do anything, right? Yeah. Maybe I need to put these in first and then I can slip the licorice under. Uh, I think I need to make it a little bit looser. Everything is sticky. The tape is sticky. The licorice is sticky. I think this is going to work. It's just a very long process, but we're good. we got this. Let's do it. Looks twisty. Looks licorice-y. Gonna let this dehydrate and hopefully those twists hold. Licorice! Done. Kind of, maybe. So, I'm gonna make meatballs and try to glaze them in gravy and call them Whoppers. So I really like this joke from The Office, you've been meatballed. So I wanna just yell, you've been meatballed. Anyways, I thought it'd be fun if we could uh, set it up like a binging with Babish. So here we go. Is there a pace to the walking? That's cool stuff. What the? You've been meatballed. <laughs> oh, are you ready for some meatball? Oh man. What's up guys? Welcome to this week's episode of Binging with Babish, where we take a look at the meatball. And every good meatball starts with the meat. Uh, Middle out bounce that way. All the way up. All the way up. How do I talk like him? This meatball recipe comes from serious eats. We're gonna start by making a panade. Does that do you think that's how Andrew would say it? panade? Panade. I feel like pa. For the panade, I'm gonna start by cutting the crust off some white bread, cubing it up, tossing it all into a bowl and covering it with some whole milk so it's nice and moist. Mmm, so moist. Next, I'm gonna dice up half a white onion until it's really nice and small. We don't want big pieces of onion sticking out of our meatball. Now it's all going to go into a mixing bowl. I cut up too much onion. Oh well, so we'll set that aside for later. Adding some salt. I couldn't find the teaspoon measure, so that's four half teaspoons of salt. Adding our panade, a little allspice, white pepper, seasoning it up. Adding an egg, uh, uh, attaching the paddle attachment and letting it mix. This is hard. Oh God. <laughs> and there's our meatball meat. Now I'm going to fill up a pot with some oil, bring it up to about 375, glove up. We're going to roll our meatball meat into meatball balls. We're going to fry it until it's nice and golden brown and cooked through. Now I put too many onions that were cut too big into my balls, so they're sticking out and it will definitely not look like a whopper. And I'm getting sick of rolling tiny balls, so we're going to do one giant meatball to meatball Andrew. Drop it in gently to get it nice and golden brown on the outside. It's going to finish cooking in the oven because this is one mighty meatball. Now that it's brown, I'm transferring it to a sheet tray and it's gonna bake for about, uh, until it's done at 350 degrees. Oh wait, wait, I think I forgot something. Come back, Sola! <laughs> okay, I wanted to put, wrap the meat around a whisk to, you know, meatball Andrew, but I forgot. So we're gonna wiggle it in and let's see if it goes in and uh, we're squishing it in. We just need its little butt to come out the other side and boom, we did it. Successful prank, meatball a la whisk. Okay, Swedish meatballs, you gotta have gravy. I'm gonna start by melting two tablespoons of butter. Once that's foamy, I'm gonna add three tablespoons of flour. Cook that for a moment. We don't wanna get any color. This is a blonde roux. It's sizzling. Okay, so now I'm gonna add two cups of chicken broth. You wanna add it just a splash at a time, stirring vigorously. If you add a whole bunch of liquid all at once, that's when you get a lumpy gravy. Once all the liquid's in there, you just need to let it simmer for a couple of minutes until the starchy taste goes away. It's gonna thicken up, but more importantly, when you taste it, it's not gonna have that like raw flour taste. My double tasting method, patented. Use less spoons and avoid double dipping. That tastes like it's cooked. Okay, I'm gonna season up my gravy. A little bit of white pep, a little bit of soy sauce, a little vinegar, just, just for a little pop, and salt. I don't know why I thought this was gonna be like brown, like the color of chocolate. It's not, it's not at all. Which one was my pouring spoon? Yeah, this is my scooping spoon. This is my tasting spoon, right? Is that how I was doing it? 
pretty good, pretty good. Now we're gonna add gel into this, which is a gel that sets warm. So I'm gonna weigh my gravy and figure out how much of the gel in I need to add, because it's based off of percentage, 420 grams. Now we need to do some math. Okay, so it's gel in F and gel in L. I think one is more flexible and one is more stiff. So you can get like the texture you want based on the combo. And this is a glaze that I used to do when I, I did poached pears and then I would glaze it in the poaching liquid. And I kind of like that ratio. It's like, it's like a tender gel that holds tight. So that's what I'm going for with this gravy. So I need 0.15% of gel and F of 425 grams, which is, wait, 420, hold on, math. 420 times 0.15%, 0 0.63 grams. <sighs> okay. <laughs> for the L, 0.2%, 0 0.84. Okay, cool. Did it, nailed it. I wanna get like a little vortex going here. I'm gonna sprinkle this in, then I'm gonna put it back in the pot, boil it vigorously. It needs like a full minute for it to hydrate. And then we dip our balls, easy. Look at that, it's already setting on the whisk, so gross. Okay, here we go. I should have pre-picked all my balls, huh? That's what she said. Oh God, it's setting already. <laughs> this is not a win. This is not a win. These don't look like whoppers. Uh, I think that the glaze is gone. It's just, we got a few. I'm gonna taste it. Tastes good. Doesn't it look just like a whopper, guys? <laughs> okay, let's see how the big ball's doing. Okay, I think we're ready to do this. Ready. Let's cut. Cut. You ready for me? Ready for you. Come on down. You ready for me to come down? Yeah. Okay. Woo! A lot of stairs. This oh is my the gosh, longest it's all staircase building. ever. Oh, no, don't get this. Food okay. illusions. All illusions right. of food. This, these are illusions because they look like normal food to me. Mm -hmm. This looks like Twizzlers. Okay. This looks an awful lot like popcorn. Yes. I will be the first to admit that yep. I'm eluded. Uh-huh. That's not right. This has stumped me. <laughs> um, and what do we have in the chicken? <laughs> I think we'll wait for the, the chicken. chicken. Okay. But let's start with the, the corn let's because the this corn. guy's gonna melt. It's gonna melt? <laughs> so, uh... Do I eat it with a spoon? I think you should just get in there. You should get just in there. Get in there. Okay. Dig right. deep. So I was gonna say this looks exactly like popcorn, but okay. Because it is we have popcorn. A, we see. have oh, we have some sort of iced cream. Iced iced cream. Iced cream of the iced version of the iced. Is that popcorn ice cream? Mm-hmm. Buttered popcorn ice cream. Mm-hmm. Just because it reminds me of buttered popcorn jelly bellies. Mmm. It bums me out. <laughs> That's my favorite jelly belly. Oh, I need to try that ice cream on its own without the... It tastes better than the Jelly Bellies because it tastes, it actually tastes like buttered popcorn instead of nightmares, you know? It tastes, this tastes like buttered popcorn ice cream. It's I scooped the goop off the bag of popcorn. Ugh. You know, whatever. The whatever. butter substitute? The butter substitute. Okay, this is the yeah. orangest popcorn I've ever seen in my life. Real popcorn doesn't taste as popcorny anymore to me because I've gotten used to this, you know? That's sad. Wow. I know. <laughs> <laughs> You've been ruined for real popcorn. Yeah. So I'm, I'm team red vines. I'm team red vines as well. You are? Okay. Because I like so. to peel. No, yeah. that's Twizzler. What? No. Yeah. Original okay. Twizzlers you can't, you can't peel. But red, red vines you can't peel at all. Okay, then I don't know what yeah. I'm talking about in the licorice game. Oh, it's very soft, wow. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. It tastes healthy. Very healthy. Go there, Andy. Go to the place the that dark this came place from. They've become, They've become, become one. The sugar, sugar. I was gonna say strawberry, but that wouldn't make sense because then it would just be homemade Twizzlers. But, because it's got like a really earthy flavor, and, we'll uh -huh. say, and because of the color, I'm gonna say beet. Is it beet? It's a parsnip. Parsnip? Candied in beet juice. Oh, so 50%, okay. half the points. All right, I get 50. Half points. Okay. You get a 50 out of 100, that's I, a fail. I love that. <laughs> I've been stumped. <laughs> All right, last up, your trademark. It's becoming your signature chicken. The final chicken. Uh, the final chicken. What's in the final chicken? They're whoppers. They're whoppers, I love whoppers. Whoppers. 
That's what they are. Okay. That's what they are, guys. They're whoppers. Can I unchecken it? Yeah, do it. All right, it's been de chicken. They're white whoppers. Because whoppers are normally chocolate. Color, yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay, so they're yeah. white whoppers. Uh huh. That's already, already you've thrown me. <laughs> so I just eat this with my hands. I guess so. Okay. Ooh, oh boy. <laughs> it's oh, squishy. The outside, outside is squishy. Outside is rather squishy. It's a meatball. <laughs> it is a meatball. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> With the gravy glaze. Did you? What, how much gelatin did you put in the glaze? Did you put gelatin in there? It's a gelatin. It's a gelatin glaze. Gelatin glaze. Because it sets while it's hot. Yeah. Because I want these to be hot. Uh, okay. They're not hot. Okay. Can we pretend they're, they're hot? hot. Ooh, 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 hot, hot. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Look at it, guys. Look at it. Look at it squidge around. I just feel like an, I ate an alien meat egg. I think this might have been better for scary candy. So this episode's really gone off the rails. <laughs> says, I like it when it goes off the rails. We have another surprise that has nothing to do with food illusions. Okay, is it more cockroaches? Are you ready? I don't know. I don't know Are, you Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? I'm not ready. This is the only thing about this episode that made me happy. Telling that this you... was going to be how the day ends. Okay, as long as it made you happy, fine, I'm ready, I'm ready. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. You've been meatballed. <laughs> oh, what happened to Stanley? What happened to poor Stanley? <laughs> He's been meatballed. Whoops. In the face. It's gravy. <laughs> he got a little gravy on his face. You've been gravy, Stanley. Hmm, that's a good meatball. You've been meatballed. We've I've all been, been meatballed. meatballed today. What do you think? Do you think you were stumped today? Uh-huh. <laughs> and with my consensus, I believe, finally, we've stumped someone. And so, but at least you've been meatballed. At least I've been meatballed. So it's okay. That it was worth it, it all because of that. Not stumped, been meatballed. And next time you want to meatball your friends, call Butcher Box. Want to meatball your friends but don't know how? It's time to call Butcher Box. You've been meatballed. Directly in the face. Thank you, ButcherBox, again for sponsoring this episode. With ButcherBox, you get regular deliveries of high-quality chicken, pork, beef, and seafood on the schedule that you want. You know what, Solo? Yes, Andrew. <laughs> you know, Solo. <sighs> yes, Andrew. Solo! Yes, Andrew. I've tried so much ButcherBox. <laughs> you know, Solo. Yes, Andrew. I've been eating a lot of this ButcherBox meat recently, and I'm super impressed with how porky the pork is, how beefy the beef is, how lobstery the lobster is. It's all incredible because it's all free range, grass fed, wild caught, heritage, good stuff. And if you're concerned about packaging, your order will come in an eco-friendly, 100% recyclable box. Even if you're not concerned about packaging, still gonna come in a 100% eco-friendly recyclable box. Head to the link in the video description to sign up now. Mm -hmm. New members get an all natural, free range, organic turkey. For, for free! free! Get, get one, one now. now. Get one now. Get one now. Please go get one. Please go get one. I have kids to feed. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Why did I do this? It, it, it's so much worse than I imagined. And it doesn't even look like Whoppers. <laughs> <laughs>